Why do we need to anticoagulate? First, it is important to reduce the complexity of care and the nursing workload. It is to minimize blood loss from clotting, to preserve the life of circuit, and importantly, to maximize the renal replacement therapy dose. We know that dose is equal to clearance multiplied by time. And clotting reduces clearance by reducing the surface area and dialyzer efficiency. Clotting also reduces time by interruptions and in some studies, it decreases the intended duration from 24 hours to 16 hours per day. There are two main categories of anticoagulation, which is systemic versus regional anticoagulation. In systemic anticoagulation, patient and the circuit is anticoagulated and a common agent that is used is unfractionated heparin or low molecular weight heparin. In regional anticoagulation, only the circuit is anticoagulated while the patient is not anticoagulated. So you can see particular benefits in conducting regional anticoagulations over systemic anticoagulation, in particular for patients who are prone to bleeding. Heparin and protamine has not gained favor because protamine has got significant side effects, including the risk of anaphylactic reactions. It is clear from international guidelines and consensus that regional citrate anticoagulation is the preferred form of anticoagulation in continuous therapies. In the recent years, there is also increasing interest in measuring the quality of our continuous therapies. And the delivered dose is advocated as a quality measure which should be routinely monitored to ensure coherence with our prescribed dose. How does regional citrate anticoagulation work? We are familiar with the coagulation cascade, whereby it starts with either the intrinsic pathway or the extrinsic pathway that eventually goes on to the common pathway. It is important to note that besides the coagulation factors, calcium, is an essential cofactor in the coagulation cascade. The coagulation cascade is arrested when ionic calcium levels fall below 0.35 millimoles per litre. And therefore, a post-filter calcium, ionic calcium of less than 0.3 millimoles per litre has been shown to correspond to an activated clotting time of more than 120 seconds. And this is the basis for citric as an anticoagulant. This is the setup for regional citric anticoagulation. This is how the CKRT circuit will run. And originally, citrate is administered using either acid citrate dextrose or 4% trisodium citrate. Citrate is introduced somewhere before the dialyzer and this achieves a low ionic calcium within the dialyzer. Depending on the protocol that you use, different targets are used but roughly is in a range of less than 0.4 or less than 0.35 millimoles per liter. Just before the blood returns to the patient or through a central line, calcium replacement is administered. And the aim is to bring the calcium levels back to near or normal levels of ionic calcium for the patient, such that the patient does not suffer any effects of hypocalcemia. To simplify the setup for regional citrate anticoagulation, citrate is added into a replacement fluid. The replacement fluid is administered pre-blood pump and it is part of the total effluent dose that achieves the intended dialysis or hemofiltration for CKRT. The targets 
for the ionic circuit calcium is the same and there will also be replacement to return the patient back to normal calcemia.